All right, hi Year 12s, it's Mr. Lim here again, and this is our first video on chemical synthesis, multi-step reactions. All right, so what are multi-step reactions? They are uh, chemical reactions that are completed over multiple steps, duh. Calculations need to be completed over all of the steps and can be done each step individually or as one big combined step. Okay, so we're really dealing with these multi-step reactions in terms of calculations. Okay, you need to recognize that with multi-step equations, the stoichiometry works across the equations, so horizontally, but not from one equation to another. So not moving from one equation to another. Let's go through an example. So for this multi-step equation where you're producing ammonia first and then you're producing ammonium nitrate, okay, what that might mean is that, uh, let's have a look, one mole of nitrogen gas, so nitrogen gas here, will produce two moles of ammonia. That makes sense, all right? It's not as if all of a sudden, as between when you go from that ammonia to this ammonia, you lose half of it. So you're not going to do a stoichiometry between that two and the one there. What it means is that you have two moles of this NH3, and that two moles of that NH3 is going to uh, form two moles of that NH4NO3, because there's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so the idea is that you do not have stoichiometry down, you do not have that stoichiometry down the uh, two equations, or uh, from one equation to another, but you have stoichiometry across the equations. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. So say you have 6.3 moles of hydrogen gas, will produce 4.2 moles of ammonia, and then the 4.2 moles of ammonia doesn't suddenly halve, it just goes on and produces 4.2 moles of ammonium nitrate. Okay, so the idea is that you do not have stoichiometry going down a reaction, going from one reaction to another. Okay, so if you really felt like it, you can combine multi-step equations in a process similar to that of redox half equations by multiplying the equations so that the common product or reactant ends up with the same coefficient. Okay, you have to do this for each equation you want to add in, which makes it quite difficult to do for many steps. So I'll show you what I mean here. So you look at this first one here, and the common reactant product is C. Okay, so you've got 3C in the second equation and 1C in the first equation, which means that you need to multiply this entire first equation by 3. All right, so when you do that, you do 6A plus 9, oops, whoop, 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 that doesn't look right, plus 9B goes across uh, plus uh, 3C plus D, okay, so that means I've just put in from these two here, that's there, because they've multiplied by one, I haven't changed anything to them, okay, goes across to, uh, what, 3C, 3C, and E, okay, so then I can cancel out those, and now I'm just left with that, okay, so 6A plus 9B uh, plus a D goes to E, all right, then what I have to do is I say, okay, well, what's my common, what's my common um, reactant and product for this equation? That one there and that one there, that E there. So I have to multiply this entire reaction by two, okay? Which means that I'll have end up something like, okay, 12A plus 18B plus 2D, and then I have to add in the stuff from over here, all right? So plus uh, 2E plus 2F, and then it goes to, and then what will it go to? It will go to 2E, uh, what color? 2E, as well as G. Okay, the 2Es cancel out, all right? So all you end up is with this, right? 12A plus 18B plus 2D plus 2F makes a G. Okay, um, so that's the way to do it, but that takes a lot of effort. So ultimately, it'd probably just be easier if you were to just do it one by one by one. Okay, so if I said that, okay, if I have four moles of A, right, I'm going to make two moles of C. If I have two moles of C, I'm going to make, what, uh, two over three moles of E. Then I have two over three moles of E, I'm going to make... 1 over 3 moles of G, okay? And so it's a 4 to 1 third uh, ratio, which is, I think, a uh, 12 to 1 ratio, okay? So that's the way I would do it, but you can do it this way if you really feel like it.
All right. So for multi-step reactions, also the reaction that occurs the slowest produces the least amount of uh, the least amount in the set amount of time is the rate determining step, and the whole process will only go as fast as that reaction. So I've only seen this once or twice, um, but the idea is that you when they'll give you information about how fast each reaction is going, and then they'll say, well, um, what is the rate determining step? It's the slowest one. Okay, so that's just a little bit about multi-step reactions. Not much. Um, and then we will continue on with rate and yield optimization in the next video. Adios.